Hello, everybody, and welcome to another one in our series, Breaking Down Barriers. My name is Chris Igwe, and these series are inspired by my book, Breaking Down Barriers, my journey from a small African village to the world stage. And in this particular video, I want to focus on that, my journey from a small African village to the world stage. Why now? Well, first of all, I do refer to it in the book anyway, in terms of how you can grow and expand your speaking career. And this particular session, or the reason I'm here, I'm in, the, in Cannes in the south of France, and I've been coming here for this particular event the past almost 30 years now when it first started. And the reason I'm using this as an explanation is because when I refer to the world stage, it doesn't mean that you have to be or want to be on the world stage. I know there are a lot of people who would rather die than speak. The fear of speaking is one of the most debilitating experiences you could have. The number of people who don't want to go on stage, who don't want to speak, whether you're extrovert or introvert, introvert doesn't matter. There are people who just don't want to be and don't feel comfortable being on stage. Now, I have learned this over time. It's been a progressive process, not a, a one, one that happened immediately. But can specifically, this is one of the top retail real estate trade shows and conferences in the world happening every year here in Cannes. And I've been invited to be Master of Ceremony and I have been for about the last 12 or 13 years when I was invited to be a part of that process, help, de help develop the conference, build it into what it is, find speakers, get panel discussions, and it's just evolved, obviously. Uh, they first invited me out to be um, involved as MC on a digital summit, which they created and then the Outlet Summit, and since then there have been various other events as the company has grown and expanded its thoughts and ideas and followed the retail and the retail real estate trends. I tell you this because I didn't start out here thinking this is what I want to do. What I do as my main core, if you like, of my business is helping retailers and brands expand and assess their portfolio and renegotiate terms and conditions as and where needed. So I've really been working with premium luxury brands over my retail real estate career. But I thought that this was an interesting extension to what I could be doing and has grown and grown and grown. And since then with MAPIC, which is the uh, organization that runs these sh shows or events, MAPIC is very much international, has different points. I, I went to Shanghai and helped them open Shanghai with conferences for a couple of years. I've been involved in Milan and of course here in Cannes for a long period of time. So we've journeyed together and grown together and they've been very supportive in terms of my own journey. So these are opportunities on the one hand that come up and you embrace. Now that said, when I first started, I did decide that although I started speaking on stage when I was with a brand called Foot Locker, you might've heard of, and the opportunity came because Foot Locker was at that stage, we were in eight countries, 220 odd stores, I was based in the Netherlands and we were one of those as today very much, but in those days it was early called cross-border retail. Not many brands were successful in cross-border retail. Now it's all over the place. And so I was sought after as head of real estate to come and speak on these events. And ICSC, the International Council of Shopping Centers was my first platform, if you like, to really get out there and speak internationally. I then decided that I wanted to and had to do this in a more professional manner. On the one hand, being trained by the renowned, world-renowned Bill Gove speech workshop with Bill Gove himself at the time, and since then, Steve Siebold, his partner. So I learned the fundamentals of public speaking, corporate speaking, professional speaking, and have developed that ever since. These are just steps for me to say to you, if you have an idea about where you want to be. It may not be on stage. Maybe you have no interest in going on stage, but where is it you want to be? What is your vision? What is your goal? What is your expectation around where you want to be in five, 10, 15, 20 years time? The speaking journey for me has been, I would say probably about 23, 25 years or so when I've really started developing that. Uh, I've been in the retail industry for almost 30 years now, but the first seven years I was learning the fundamentals of the business and really understanding how cultures, how locations, how strategies vary depending on countries and how you wanted the brand to be positioned. 
But since then, I've broadened my context and understanding. I've spoken in Shanghai, I've spoken in Los Angeles, I've spoken in Copenhagen, I've spoken in Lisbon, Barcelona, Berlin, Hamburg, Paris, obviously, London. And it's just gone from strength to strength to strength. And not just doing the corporate speaking side, well, keynote speaking, should I say, but also developing being master of ceremony, which is a very different skill from being a keynote. In a keynote, you go on and you do your speech and you come off, you prepare, obviously, and you prepare, and you're seen as kind of the flagship, one of the flagship moments, one of the core moments in a conference. So there's a very different skill and technique around being a keynote speaker. But being a master of ceremony, which is what I've been doing with uh, MAPIC, for example, there are so many moving parts that one has to take care of, so many individuals. There's a process, there's planning, there's an organization where you look to support not only the organizers of the event itself, in this case MAPIC, but also the technical team. What do they need on the day? The sound, the projection, the videos, the PowerPoint presentations, the microphones, the sound, how that works around. If something goes wrong, who do you go to? How do you sort that out? So there are many, many moving parts. And then the hostesses as well, wonderful hostesses who are there not only to check people's badge, but make, make sure people are comfortable in the environment. I'm saying that all these are part of the skill set that you need to acquire. And I'm honored and privileged that the events that I've been invited to be a part of and to lead as master of ceremony or moderating panel sessions or discussions, or indeed being a keynote, are on the basis of hard work, diligence, attention to detail, and just focusing on what the outcome is that is intended, not just for the organizers, but for the panelists, and especially, of course, those who attend the events. I say all this because my journey from a small African village has gone through many different stages, many different aspects. The speaking on stage and being on stage is definitely one of the pinnacles of my experience or what I enjoy. I enjoy it because I can talk to 10 people as I can talk to 10,000 people. I've spoken to thousands of people, I've spoken to hundreds of people. That comes with acquiring a skill set and knowledge and ability, but equally importantly is to train yourself to understand what it is that you need and how you deploy those skills in different places. Now I have to say that if you stay till the end, you'll discover uh, through some compilations exactly what this has involved and because I'm in this hotel room, I have to say, again, one of the odd privileges from time to time is apart from the client taking care of me, but when you arrive and you're told at the check-in desk, oh, you've actually been upgraded. And I then have the privilege of having a junior suite, which is fantastic. Those are just the little things that make a little difference from time to time, but it doesn't take away from the hard work that you put in. But at the same time, it's nice when the client recognizes you takes care of you, which they always do in different events and projects and conferences that I've been to or been invited to. I have no complaints on that front. They've actually been totally tremendous. So in rounding this off is to say the journey is right where you are right now. The destination is where you want to be. What is that destination? What does it look like? Is it clear? If it's not clear enough, make it clearer. Drill down, drill down, drill down. Work on all the aspects. If you want to be on stage, which stage? What do you want to be known for? What do you want to speak about? As I said, I started out with speaking on cross-border retail. That's what people wanted to know about. Today, it's broader than that. In a simple context, we talk about trends. What are the trends, Chris? What's going on? But trends is very big. It could be anything and everything. <clears throat> so you get to be very specific, very focused, very narrow. But obviously being master of ceremony is very different. It's a broader context. And I can, in a totally separate conversation, help understand what being an MC is all about, master of ceremony. Various individuals have reached out to me to ask me, saying, you are one of the references, if not the reference. There are those who say, and I'm very grateful that I am the reference in this industry. I can't compare to any other industry. Because on the one hand, I work in the trenches with my clients, whether they're retailers or they're landlords or owners or investors. I know 
the basic fundamental foundational issues that challenge this industry. But at the same time, I know how to take that knowledge and insight and extract it during a conversation where I'm moderating or I'm doing a keynote conversation as I've done with three phenomenal global CEOs in this particular event where we just had a great conversation around and they're all female, which is fantastic. Extracting from them, what are the issues that challenge them? But that's work. You don't just get up there and do it. You work, work, work. So nothing is a quick fix and nothing is a fast resolution. You have to put the work in just as I have done over the past 30 years, I guess, but uh, 23 specifically in this, this industry. So I hope that's resonated with you, given you some ideas. Like I say, enjoy the experience of what you're going to see very shortly. And I want to thank you. And until the next time, thank you. One of the real pleasures of being a master of ceremony is really being taken care of by your clients. I mean, look at this for a beautiful room that I'm staying in. I was upgraded. Uh, I was told that I was given an upgrade, which is absolutely fantastic. Really appreciate it by my clients. And um, yeah, when you experience an organization who takes care of you with my little gift in there, it looks like champagne. So I am going to have to put it in the holds because you can't take it on planes anymore. But um, this is my you can see beautiful environment so it really allows me to be creative and work hard uh, obviously look at the the bathroom look what that looks like um, got my little ground dressing gown there so looking getting ready for an evening siesta and then i uh, got to show you this as well which is pretty cool uh, so there's another working area here as well so this is Fabulous, fabulous. And then when you look at the, the toilets, um, obviously all thought going into it, the color, the design and everything else. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just fantastic to be looked after by clients. This is one of the perks, if you like, when you are getting on stage. And like I said, because I was upgraded, which uh, has happened in the past as well, which is just fantastic. So just wanted to share that with you. These are part of the experiences that one enjoys as you get to express yourself and just be what you really want to be, which in this case is a keynote speaker or indeed master of ceremony, moderating the various sessions in the beautiful city of Cannes.